already spent good money on the core game. We're not buying this batch of extra crap. More objects, more outfits, more stuff than ever before. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 worst video game DLC of all time. The power truly is in your hands. For this list, we'll be taking a glance at the worst DLC, or downloadable content, in the realm of gaming. Whether due to price, nature of the content, or being just generally insulting. I can't believe you get to play with this stuff every day. <laughs> it never gets old. We feel that these examples of DLC set a poor standard for modern gaming as a whole. We're sticking to page DLC here, so no free content will be listed. Number 10. Horse Armor. Elder Scrolls 4 Oblivion. For something so basic, it's a surprise to find a real-world price tag attached. Fans of the open-world RPG The Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion were, shall we say, surprised to learn that in-game horse armor was available only via the Horse Armor Pack add-on, which costed between $199 and $250 depending on the system. I don't like to talk about it much, as it's bad for business. While by no means the most atrocious example of paid downloadable content, it's become a running joke in the gaming community as one of the first examples of ridiculous DLC. I have seen the gates of oblivion, beyond which no waking eye may see. At least the industry's learned their lesson from this. Unless we're talking about Konami. Number 9. The Color Pack. Street Fighter 3 Third Strike Online Edition. DLC can take many forms, including alternate character colors, it seems. Yes, back in 2011, developer Capcom announced that Street Fighter 3 Third Strike Online Edition would receive various downloadable content, including something called Color Pack 1. Prepare to strike now. What did that entail? Well, it added seven alternate sprite colors to each playable character, which won't show up in replays and could only be seen by the opponent unless they too owned the DLC. Check it out, man. We'll say this, this is an interesting move, Capcom. <laughs> Number 8. Easy Fatalities Mortal Kombat X While not game-breaking, this certainly feels like a buzzkill. Mortal Kombat X, the tenth main installment of the brutal fighting game series, features the franchise's first instance of microtransactions. Sonya wins. Along with unlocking the contents of the crypt for 20 bucks, the game offers players easy fatalities in packs of 5 or 30 so long as you're willing to pay 99 cents or 4.99 respectively. <laughs> Fatalities being the trademark difficult to perform yet cathartic special kills of the Mortal Kombat franchise, this new feature seems to undercut the appeal, and thus the fun, of fatalities in general. And don't even get us started on that pre-order bonus. Number 7. Oscorp Search and Destroy Pack the Amazing Spider-Man. In theory, nostalgic throwbacks are fun, but in execution, not everything is a winner. I hope it's better than the first time I snuck in. That was not fun. Case in point, the Oscorp Search and Destroy pack released for the Amazing Spider-Man is built upon simplistic recreations of classic arcade games. The first minigame included, Gwen's Hunter, acts as a reskinned version of the 1978 Space Invaders, while the second minigame, Destroy the City Mission, is a clear clone of the game's Snake. While these challenges are certainly loyal to their source material, the depth is sacrificed in the process. Number 6. From Ashes. Mass Effect 3. Even on release day, some companies just can't help themselves. Any gamers not able to pre-order Mass Effect 3 would have to spend an extra $10 to obtain this content on day one, focusing on a special mission to Eden Prime. During our war, this place became a myth to my people, a dream glimpsed only in the memory shards. Of greater note, however, is the crew member made available via the DLC. Javik, a member of the not insignificant Prothean race. We are alive and we will fight back. It's one thing to make a side mission paid content, but walling off a character tied into the series lore feels unnaturally greedy. Plus, the mission isn't even that good. Will you join us? You fight the Reapers? Yes. 
then we will see. Number five, Ranger Mode, Metro Last Light. Similar to the Elite status in Madden 2010, this is a case of difficulty being withheld for a fee. So, what's inside? Metro Last Light, a first-person shooter published by Deep Silver, raised controversy upon release for having the hardcore, ultra-immersive Ranger Mode difficulty setting as a pre-order exclusive. That's the critical here. Ranger Mode was eventually made available to all players for $4.99 after the initial cost of the game. And if you have second thoughts, don't worry. What's worse is that the mode was promoted as the way that Last Light was intended to be experienced. So, take from that what you will. The way it was meant to be played. So the way the game that was meant to be played, we're gonna remove it from the game, we're gonna charge you five dollars. Number four, the second season pass, Evolve. Is $60 plus the cost of one season pass not enough for you? Well, for fans of Turtle Rock Studios' cooperative shooter Evolved, there's now the prospect of a second season pass with which to contend. Offering four new hunters, some new skins, and one new monster, Evolve Hunting Season 2 launched in June 2015, costing 25 bucks, the same price as the first season pass, with the added detail that each character would be available for purchase individually. Combined with practices such as selling the Behemoth monster for 15 bucks and a seriously confusing match of DLC right at launch, there's no shortage of questionable decisions for Evolve. Number 3, The Midnight Show, Saboteur. For how it was pitched, this add-on seems lacking. For the uninformed, The Saboteur was a 2009 open-world game set during World War II, with players taking on the role of resistance fighter Sean Devlin. The Midnight Show, included free with new copies of the game and later sold separately for five bucks, was intended to add some extra features into the game world. Most notably, the ability to turn on full nudity for the game's brothel girls. It's getting cold on the Setting aside the controversy of the content itself, it's hard to justify charging players extra money for what is, at best, a minor feature. You Frenchmen have unrealistic expectations. Open your eyes! Number two, everything. Railworks Train Simulator. <laughs> There's certainly a crowd for every game, but this is a stretch. With each update of the simulation game Railworks, now known as Train Simulator, the amount of downloadable content available for purchase has grown. It's estimated that the game's backlog of DLC has a value of over $2,000, mostly consisting of different locomotives and routes. Despite the developer stating that they don't expect players to buy all the content, the sheer breadth of it suggests otherwise. We're speechless, to say the least. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. To defeat the Deadly Six, Sonic the Hedgehog must travel across the mystical worlds of the Lost Hex. There's enough fashion and furnishings to make your mouth water. be ignored. We must stop what is coming. Number one, true ending, Asura's Wrath. Is it over? Is it really all over? I don't know. For fans of the game and general gamers alike, this was one heck of an insult. Asura's Wrath ends on a cliffhanger immediately after what appeared to be the final battle. Except that wasn't quite the end. The publisher, Capcom, revealed that a bonus fourth chapter would be sold for seven bucks, containing the conclusive finale to the game. Besides the upsetting idea that a developer traded the cohesive storyline for profit, there's nothing good to be said about players having to choose between accepting the game they have and paying for a complete experience. 
Imagine if Star Wars ended right after our heroes rescued the princess, and you had to pay extra if you wanted to see the Death Star battle. That's basically it. How dare you defy me? I will destroy you and your so-called world! Do you agree with our list? Get away from me! This is your fault! What's your least favorite video game DLC? For more expansive top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Thank you, Commander. I've enjoyed my time here, walking among the young. Thank <music> you.